Troy Aikman is joining me now right now on the Rich Eisen Show. Troy, how you been, man? Hey, you're Rich. Doing great. Thanks for having me. Oh, are you kidding me? I just We just had your, your booth uh, partner, Joe Buck, on before. and uh, Oh, he, nice. You know, he called me Alex P. Keaton because I'm wearing a button-down shirt with a, with a blue sweater here in, uh, in, the, in the western <laughs> town that DirecTV's built me. But, you know, leave it to Joe. You know, he, 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 went, he cut straight to the heart of the matter. Um, yeah. <laughs> so you were very outspoken about Tom Brady knowing about these footballs being uh, uh, being less than uh, the PSI pressure and how the, the Patriots should be, if found guilty, hit harder than the league hit the Saints. Do you still feel the same way, Troy? Well, let me let me first say, Rich, that you know my comments were made last Thursday morning. Uh, Tom had not yet addressed the media, and so when I was asked the question, I was asked with the presumption that the balls had been tampered with. Obviously, that's still you know, being determined, but just based on my experience, Rich, as a quarterback, if anything's being done to the balls, they're being done because that's how the quarterback likes the balls prepared going into a football game. It's a, it's a real simple deal. Uh, I guess time will determine whether or not anything illegal happened, but I think as far as the penalty, if in fact that's what happened, then uh, I believe that when you call into question the integrity of the game and the competitive balance of a contest, I, I think that punishment should be severe. And, you know, people will say, really, do you think that, don't you think trying to injure a player at Bounty Gate is worse than just a couple of pounds of, of pressure? Well, when you put it that way, I'd say, yeah, you're right. You know, trying to hurt a player is, is worse, but there was never anything proven uh, by what was spoken about in the locker rooms took place onto the field. Uh, but whenever anything's done that calls into question the competitive balance and the integrity of the game, uh, we've got a real problem. And, uh, and that's why I said what I said, and I, and I stand behind that. I have Troy Aikman, three-time Super Bowl champion, lead analyst of uh, Fox Sports and the NFL on Fox right here, calling into the Rich Eisen Show a Thursday before a Super Bowl. Tom Brady and Russell Wilson done with their media availability for the week. What happens between now and Super Sunday for a Super Bowl combatant at the quarterback position, Troy? Well, they'll, you know, they've had a lot of time to prepare. Uh, of course, last week a big part of the, the game plan was put in, and they came here and they're meeting their media obligations. And, you know, they'll get through their last big workout today. There's still some work to be done, clearly, uh, with the workouts tomorrow and, and then uh, as you move into the weekend. But uh, most of the heavy lifting at this point is behind them. Uh, I know that when I was playing, Rich, the thing that you try to do as best you can uh, it's hard because you are taken out of your comfort zone. You're not preparing the same way that you do when you're back at home. Uh, but you try to make it as normal a week as you can and still fulfill the obligations that the, that the league has before you. Uh, I think that's uh, something that benefits both of these quarterbacks. One, Russell was just playing in this team a year ago, so he's familiar with it. He knows what to expect going into the game, what the atmosphere is like when you take the field. And then, of course, you know, Tom's been, uh, been in a number of these, so none of this is a surprise for him. Uh, and I expect them both to come out and uh, play at the level that we've seen of them all year. Well, Tom is uh, one of the few guys who, in the world who have as many Super Bowl rings as you, Troy. And he's trying to get as many Super Bowl rings as one of our guests that we had here earlier in Joe Montana. And the only other quarterback with four rings we have on tomorrow's show and Terry Bradshaw. Do, do, did you ever, when you had two wing, rings, does a quarterback think about legacy games on the day itself? I mean, do you, do, do you think about the idea of what another ring would mean for your career and the way people view your place in the game, Troy? Yeah, I think, I think you do. Uh, you know, it's only natural. I, I think when you wake up on Super Bowl Sunday uh, as a quarterback, you're focused on one thing, and that's just winning the game. I, I don't think in those moments, you know, you're thinking much beyond what you have to do to try to win. But I, I think leading up to uh, a Super Bowl, you know, once you win the AFC championship game, the NFC championship game, and you're on your way to the Super Bowl, I know for me, as soon as we won our first championship game, I thought, you know, wow, as great as this feels, now the only thing that matters is we've got to win one more because that's all anybody remembers. I mean, uh, we see what Tom's been able to do and win three and then lose a couple and, uh, and people then don't really pay much attention to the fact that he's been in five. And, and uh, they just say, well, yeah, but he's won three. And, and that's how important and that's how much winning this game means. And so uh, there's no question uh, that as a quarterback, you certainly understand 
uh, what's before you, what that means to your career, uh, your candidacy. In my case, is uh, being a Hall of Fame quarterback. Uh, but uh, I, I, we're, we've been given an opportunity to watch some unbelievable quarterbacks, you know, over the years. You mentioned Joe Montana. He was he's just outside the the room here where I'm talking, and mm-hmm. you know, I always regarded him as the best of all time from the guys that I saw. Uh, but now when we get a chance to see guys like Peyton Manning and Tom Brady, you know, these are guys that we'll be talking to our kids about and grandkids about, and uh, they'll rem- be remembered, uh, you know, for a long, long time for their contributions in the sport. A couple more questions for you, Troy. On uh, Championship Sunday, before you were calling that game uh, in, in, um, in Seattle, Michael Irvin and the rest of the game day morning uh, Super Bowl winners were asked by NFL uh, media management to bring in their Super Bowl rings to wear on, on the show. And Irv brought his three, and he laid them out in front of him. And I went up and I Instagrammed a picture of it out, and I looked at him, I'm like, man, that's so cool. And, and he said to me, we should have won five. That was his response. <laughs> Would you agree with that, Troy Aikman? Uh, you know, I, I appreciate what he's saying. I, I, I tend not to say that because... What it does, in my opinion, Rich, is it, it really then takes away from how truly difficult it is to win a Super Bowl. Uh, you know, I think we would have been competitive for a lot longer period of time had Jimmy had stayed uh, and coached there for 10 years, like what Bill Belichick has done in New England. But uh, I, I guess I'd like to think we would have gone on and, and won one or two more. But I, I hate saying that because I think it does take away from uh, the degree of difficulty in achieving that. But we were... Yeah, you know, we were a special team. We had great players. We didn't realize how good we were at the time that we were going through it. Uh, but it was a great run for us. And, uh, heck, I look back on my career and just proud to have been a part of one like that. NFLTicketExchange.com. Tell me about uh, about this and, uh, and, and relation to the Super Bowl. What's going on? Yeah, well, I mean, as we know, there's a lot of people trying to get into the Super Bowl game. There's a lot of fraudulent tickets out there. And uh, the only way to be guaranteed that you're getting an authentic Super Bowl ticket is through Ticketmaster, who's partnered – you know, with the NFL, and uh, we've heard the stories, and I've met some of the people who have gone out and paid a lot of hard-earned money for a Super Bowl ticket only to find out that it was not an authentic ticket and the money was gone. So uh, just getting word out there that if you are going to buy on the secondary market, uh, go to the one where you're guaranteed an authentic ticket, uh, their ticket exchange and Ticketmaster. And in the minute I have left with you, Troy, what happens Sunday in your belief? You've, you've seen these teams. You know these teams. What happens when, uh, when Toe meets ball across the street from here? Sunday. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping for a great game as everybody is. I, I thought we'd get that last year, Rich. It obviously didn't turn out that way. Seattle's awfully good defensively. I, I think that as good as Seattle is defensively, uh, you know, they're facing a great quarterback in Tom Brady. So it'll be a little bit of a different challenge for them, much like it was in the NFC Championship game with Aaron Rodgers. Uh, but I think overall, looking at these two teams, offense, defense, and I, I think New England is the more complete team. Uh, but both teams have protected the ball well during the season. That'll be a key. Uh, heck, I just hope it comes down to the wire like so many of these games have. Troy, thanks for calling in. I really appreciate it. Hey, you bet, Rich. Thanks for having me, man. Uh, anytime. That's Troy Aikman, three-time Super Bowl winner, NFL on Fox lead analyst. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.